Uh, so you played, so in your records throughout the 70s, you were dealing with a lot of those, a lot of funk rhythms and a lot of rock rhythms, and things exactly. of that nature, the electric instruments. And then, right. you know, in the last since probably, I guess it would be, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but since at least the late 80s, you've been playing largely acoustic music, uh, playing yeah, with an acoustic yeah. group and, you know. Right. And that was a conscious choice. I was going to ask if it was a conscious choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard that coming around the corner. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the reason I say it's a conscious choice because, as I said, when I joined Herbie, I was just beginning to learn how to play the vocabulary of bebop, post-bebop. Then when I joined Herbie, it was more or less like open skies, mm -hmm. you know. And I always felt that my bebop playing was inadequate. Uh, uh, so to speak, you know, playing changes. And so after that ended, and then uh, after practicing medicine and then moving back to New York, I sort of realized that, that I had to more or less go back and clean up uh, some of my shortcomings musically. And that's why I made a conscious choice to go back and clean it and then change my repertoire and then, and, 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 increase my vocabulary in other areas that I was lacking. Mm -hmm. That's why when you listen to the records from the late 80s on up to the present, you, you see I, I changed from the electronics to wah-wahs and stuff to more acoustic and then playing uh, a, a different vocabulary in terms of repertoire. Sure. What did you do when you realized that you wanted to try to, let's say, enhance your bebop playing or build that up or or clean it up what, what was the process involved in doing that well i'm glad you asked that it's a good question uh by moving to new york you know it gave me because at the pr prior to that i was living in san francisco what good musician but after me, me moving to new york such a wealth uh, of different styles and music and such a vast uh, uh, multitude uh, of players with, with with different uh, uh, levels of uh, of um, proficiency, uh, a lot. You know, I would just go out and listen to different people and take mental notes and sitting in with it, asking questions. You know, and going. I'd hear something somebody would play and go home and practice it, mm -hmm. and then all you know, so sort of like like piecemeal put things together in my mind's eye. And then they say, oh, wow, that's how you do that, you know, <laughs> sure. step by step. And then that was the problem because, you know, in the old days, like when Charlie Parker and Miles and stuff were coming up, they didn't have all these schools like they do nowadays, like New England Conservatory, Juilliard, the new school and all that stuff. They, 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 just like I was just saying, people would go out and, and compare notes between musicians, you know, mm -hmm. that's more or less was advantageous to me by moving to New York and going out and meeting music, new musical friends and just gathering more musical information uh, to incorporate into my musical being. And that sort of helped me grow musically and then also helped to kind of formulate and evolve my own musical style.